As we begin from a study manager or study conduct homepage, this will be a viewpoint for those trial managers to view for any of the study specifics, the activity around different site statuses available for that study, as well as the relative enrollment or completion numbers for the subject data that are, were being sourced into the system. This is also allowing us a viewpoint into the forecast and plan values that were created when we were building out our study and where our current actual values are sitting. As we scroll through this homepage, we can keep track of monitoring visits, as well as a viewpoint into any of our milestones, both completed and more forward looking, that will be combined with any of the TMF milestones that will have related dependencies between some of our CTMS time points. This is also going to be inclusive of any of our subject related milestones, again, dependent on any of the data that we're able to bring over to the system. These will be automatically completed for you and also have some built in dependencies, perhaps to some of the ETMF components as we can see here. As we drill down a little bit further into the study that we have available from our homepage, this is where we can start to view some of those additional details that we can build out around our study or start to plan for as we're starting to plan for this trial. This is going to be inclusive of some of those high-level study details listed at the top and any related information listed below that's going to be comprising both CTMS and TMS specifics. As we start to build out this viewpoint, this is also going to be inclusive of our study team roster, which will be inherently tied to the global directory of reusable personnel and organizational information that we can further reuse and copy over to each one of the studies that we're using these people for. This is going to be helpful not only for tracking purposes to understand what people are going to be assigned to what roles, but also can be leveraged towards the security measures of the system as we're starting to perhaps incorporate any of our external users to gain access to our internal systems and start to perform some of those activities on our behalf. For example, as we start to associate one of our CRAs, Amy, the CRA, this could be either an internal personnel or perhaps an external personnel that's a vendor that we've provided access to. This is now an area where we can define what role this person will be assigned to and whether or not we're going to be leveraging this for security access by granting them access to any of those related records. In this way, we're starting to segment out that security so that they're only seeing and working with the data that they're sh they should be seeing and working with. Alternatively, we can also utilize this to carry over any of the information that we've already collected for some of these people, such as any of our site personnel or principal investigators. If I drill down into Blanche White, for example, this is where we can start to see that tie back to that personnel as a part of our global directory, or drill down a little bit further to understand what information is being carried over. This has been information that's been entered once into the system, whether that's through our CTMS personnel or our TMF personnel, and further reuse the more that we reuse this person in the future. That's going to be inclusive of multiple different contact information we can store against this person, a viewpoint into any of the studies that we've utilized them for in the past and present, as well as any information around any of their related documents that can be further utilized to be carried over or reused to those new studies. Coming back into our study viewpoint, we can continue on with more of the planning efforts. This is where we can have that viewpoint again into any of those milestones that are being built out for this study based off of a template that's defined within the background, as well as a viewpoint into our enrollment metrics for us to start to define out any of those forecast or plan values for each one of the metric types that we have available. Again, depending on what information we're carrying over from any of our external uh, vendors, this could also be inclusive of subject data to calculate any of those actuals for you. Vault will systematically read any of the subject data coming over to the system and perform those calculations here to be presented on your study page, country page, site page, as well as as a part of those viewpoints we saw from our initial home page. Progressing further, we can also utilize templatized risk assessments for each one of our studies. This is now an area where we can start to utilize approved templates, one or multiple, or start the process of selecting an existing study's uh, approved risk assessment as a starting point for this trial. This is going to be inclusive of a number of different areas, including categories and uh, different risks, as well as mitigation plans for us to start to assess and move forward with while letting Vault calculate, calculate that overall risk score for us. 
As we're going through this process, we'll see all of those templatized study risks come into play, what level they're associated to, as well as some discussion points and some pre-filled information, as well as the opportunity for users with the appropriate access to come in and start to make any sort of relevant changes to our impact, probability, and detectability values. As we're going through this process of assessing each one of these risks, it's going to be combined with an automatically calculated risk score, as well as a symbol to denote where this stands as in terms of a high level risk or something that uh, is more of a lower level risk. Inclusive as a part of these templates will also include mitigation plans for us to start to drill down into and select depending on which area we'd like to take this forward with. This is now a viewpoint into some of those mitigation plans assigned to this type of study risk for us to start to select from and utilize potentially as automatic action items or tasks to the appropriate roles defined in our study team roster. Completing out our assessment and the approval of this assessment will also result in a final document to be stored as a part of our TMF. This is going to be happening systematically as well. So as we're going through that data, the document readout will automatically become apparent as a part of our TMF artifact structure and counted towards any of those expected document line items without the need for us to create this document from scratch or pull any of that data elsewhere. Now, moving off of a more study management focus, we can log in as an internal CRA for more of the site management or vendor management components. As I log in now as a CRA viewpoint, this is where we can navigate to an oversight dashboard to view some of the different data points that we have available through any of those different feeds from an external CTMS. This is where we can view information across multiple different studies or towards study specifics to view the status of each one of our subjects across all of our sites or potentially start to calculate any risk factors towards low enrollment rates or high screen failure rates. Additionally, from here, we can capture trends around any of the issues that we're seeing, whether they're issues around quality findings with the finalized trip reports coming over from our CROs or issues being logged against these sites in total, where we can start to capture trends around what types of issues or protocol deviations are being seen, or furthermore, how long it's taking for us to resolve out those issues. All of this data can be drilled down upon, such as any of the other reports and dashboards within the system, which will bring us into the data viewpoint where this has been built off of. This is now an area where we can start to drill down a little bit further into any of those different types of issues that we're seeing against any of the different types of documents they've been logged against. Furthermore, as we continue on with the idea of bringing over data from external sources, we can start to have some different notifications at play to alert relevant users as to when that new data has been brought into the system. This is where we can see a report that has a notification attached to it so that we're aware of any of the new trip report documents that were finalized by our CRO counterparts and further just brought into our system for us to review. From this viewpoint, we can drill down even further to take a look at the document that has been completed by our CRO counterparts. As we're viewing many of this documentation, this is also going to be available for us to log any issues against this, to log it as a quality issue for any of those trends we were viewing on our dashboard. As we go through the process of logging this post-approval QC issue for some of our visit reports, this is where we can immediately assign this to either ourselves or if our CRO counterparts happen to have access to the system, we're able to assign this as a task to those CRO counterparts as well. This is allowing us to easily and more quickly resolve any of the issues that we're seeing against our trip reports and other data elements. As we drill down into the site this is attached to, this is also going to allow us a viewpoint into any additional issues that have been logged against this site. This is now an area where we can track potentially any of the protocol deviations or other issues that are being brought over through feeds of data coming over from our uh, CRO CTMS system. This will be one way to review these issues listed here, but this is also available as a part of our oversight tab listed at the top for us to view any of those issues, segmented out protocol deviations or other mitigation action items. Furthermore, our issues can be utilized past just our site performance or anything like that, but more towards any of our vendor issues that we're seeing as well. This is now an area where we can log issues directly against our CROs for us to keep track of their performance against any of the sites or studies that we utilize them for.
As we go ahead and click save for that issue here, it'll be logged against this full list of issues against this site, but more so logged against multiple different reports and dashboards that we can have available to track the performance of some of the issues that we're commonly seeing with our CROs. Additionally here, this will be tracked against our CRA homepage where we'll have a viewpoint into all of the issues logged against sites, countries, and studies, as well as a viewpoint into tracking how our sites are performing against any of the different study country averages or the other sites within this same country. Now from our CRA's homepage, we can start to drill down even farther into any of the categories of issues that we're seeing across any of the types of issues that we log to the system. From this viewpoint, we can drill down even further into that listing of issues that correspond to those filters for us to start to move forward with and start to resolve appropriately. As I drill down into the issue that I just logged here together, this is now an area where we can view any of the details surrounding this issue, as well as the status of the issue listed at the top. Taking into account the full issue management components to Vault CTMS, this is now available for us to start to move forward through various different statuses to identify if this is going through the investigation phase, implementing a new uh, plan to move forward with resolution, and finally towards that end there, calculating that resolution time from open to resolved. Lastly, as a part of this, we can track any of the activities surrounding this particular issue through activity logs, where we can track any of the calls or other communications that we're having with any of our sites or any of our vendors even around how we're trying to triage this issue and move things forward. This will also be calculated towards lists of different communication logs, as well as to relevant reports and dashboards to capture metrics around how many different items or touch points we have um, before we can resolve this out. Finishing off for today, this is also an area where we can take a step further by utilizing co-monitoring visits. If at the end of all of the data that we've presented here today results in the need for a co-monitoring visit, that's also an available type as a part of our monitoring visit templates. This is where we can drill in from our CRA's homepage into an in-progress co-monitoring visit that's being done, where all of the available data on this screen has been templatized to the type of visit that's being performed. From this point of view, we can have a link to our calendar so that we can add this to our Google Calendar or Outlook Calendar to keep track of in our personal calendaring, as well as a viewpoint into any of the participants, templatize activities as a part of this type of visit, as well as potentially any viewpoint into the subject data that's already been logged through any of those data feeds. Lastly here, we can tie this to any templatized questions and responses, where as a CRA, we can go through any of the questions for this type of visit, inclusive of any help text to help guide us as to how best to complete out some of these answers. Finishing off for our co-monitoring authoring, this is also going to be available for us to view any of the open issues that still exist out there against this site or vendor, as well as a viewpoint into any of the closed issues since the last time that we conducted a visit. This will be available for us to review as we're going through this visit or potentially an area to log any brand new issues that we were made aware of as a result of this uh, event. Upon completion of this visit, this will be available for us to route through a review and approval process directly within the system to the appropriate lead CRAs or study managers before reaching our final step of creating that final trip report document. For today's purposes, we'll navigate to one that's been finalized already, where we can now see that new trip report document has been logged against this uh, particular data visit. As we view that new trip report document, this has been systematically created very similar to the risk assessment to pull in any of the data from that prior screen into a predefined document template for the type of visit that we've conducted. This will include any of the data from any of those questions and any of the information around who signed off on this trip report uh, in more of that part 11 compliant manner to include the capacity and date and time of those signatures. Most importantly, this will be immediately logged to the TMF side of the equation as well to the appropriate classification in our TMF artifact model as a version 1.0 approved document. So because we're in that same viewpoint of TMF and CTMS, this will be inherently tied back to the TMF portion. We can see that as well from our CRA viewpoint into our TMF viewer, which we're, uh, where we can now start to navigate down to the study that we were working in, or potentially even further through our zone sections and artifacts to the appropriate uh, area for any of those visit reports. 
Now, lastly for today, outside of just the CTMS oversight viewpoint, it's also important to discuss more of the TMF elements as we're reviewing any of the documents that have been logged against this study. We could have our CRO counterparts logging into the system to perform some of these uploads and completions of these documents, which may result in us having to run through inspection readiness reviews. This is where we can have multiple documents at a time available for us to now start that new document workflow, send this off for that final inspection readiness review for any of these approved documents to perhaps a QC manager or other relevant type of role. As I switch into that role of that QC manager, we can see a task come through for that inspection readiness assessment. This will be available as a single task with multiple documents attached for us now to review any of the approved documents that our CRO counterparts have completed for us and potentially log any quality issues where we see relevant. This will be a similar process to what we saw previously for our finalized trip reports, where we can immediately assign this as a task to the appropriate users in the system, associate this to a categorization for reporting, as well as some additional issue comments. Finally, for today, all of this data and document activity can be funneled up into the appropriate reports and dashboards for review, where we can take a look at CRO profiles for more of the CTMS and TMF activity, where we can understand different trends around different issues that we're seeing against our CROs, issues broken out by the different studies that we're utilizing them for, as well as the aging around how long it's taking to resolve out those issues. The same type of dashboard can be utilized in more of a multi-CRO model as well, where we can start to compare the performance of multiple different CROs against each other. Lastly, for today, we can have a dashboard encompassing both TMF and CTMS activities into one viewpoint for an all-encompassing study progress tracker. From a single viewpoint like this, we can track the activity for the TMF trial completeness for a study where we can view any of those in-progress documents for the requirements that we have in our EDLs, as well as a viewpoint into our enrollment status by arm or issue aging for more of the CTMS components based off of the data that we have at hand. Lastly, this can be combined into a single at-risk milestones element since we'll have ETMF and CTMS milestones mixed together against the same data point within Vault uh, Clinical. This allows us a viewpoint into any of those at-risk milestones for TMF and CTMS, as well as an area to drill down into that data so that we can have a better viewpoint into those actual milestones or some clickable links.